Good morning friends. Today we are going to discuss about coordinate measuring machine and surface roughness measurement. This is related to the first year courses for the manufacturing process who will be taught these course for the first year BTEC irrespective of any branch in their manufacturing process subject. And our main two components of our subject is CMM and surface roughness measurement. CMM is coordinate measuring machine and surface roughness measurement technique is an important technique related to different metrologies associated with measurement. Now we can see this is the two topic and what is coordinate measuring machine? A classic bridge style coordinate measuring machine that is CMM accurately. Accuracy means some measurement with some target value. Accurately measures the geometry of an object along x, y, z axis using a touch trigger where touch based sensors will be there. The scanning or vision probe without any touching we can scan those surfaces or the points or the vision with the computer is vision to take a series of precise points and all those points on the surfaces of an object will be captured and on the basis of that some 3D model will be generated and that will be compared with the intended model as specified by the designers and on the basis of that the ultimate decision related to the acceptance or repair or rejections of the object will be there. So CMM machine is the beauty is that it is an universal measuring machine of the different components outside dimensions, inside dimension, difficult to access dimension, threads, surfaces, heights, angles, tapers, tapered surfaces, all those things can be easily measured by this machine. And it can be made of a wide variety of material from the slide itself in the first one can see that granite surface table and on the basis of that some surface plates are there. And this is the basic thing where the dimensional distortions are very less and it is very much uh, stable in terms of dimensions. So it is made of granite or sometimes aluminium surface plates and in order to use these as reference plates, these are used in CMM. So CMM can be made of wide variety of materials but a combination of granite and aluminium has been widely adopted because they have very good stiffness to weight ratio. It is dimensionally very stable, it is stiff and the weight is less in comparison to other allowing the constructed materials to be thermally dynamic and all sorts of things thermally stable and on the basis of that one can do the measurements and changes in ambient temperatures because ambient temperature has a big role to play because many of the materials have some expansion value finite expansion value so increase of the temperature their dimensions will be changed decrease of temperature their dimensions will also be changed so it is dimensionally one has to be very cautious. So although CMM can have a compensating uh, tool in the software so that the expansion or contraction of those machines material are monitored and compensated for the user software. Just like a good batsman offer a straight bat to a swinging delivery in order to compensate, in order to compensate the deviations because of the swing. So that also has to be compensated in the software aid and that is inbuilt into the softwares of CMM and that is the advantage of using automation. So CMM softwares are using that and the probes position can be manually controlled or automatically through the use of a computer manually controlled by in terms of a joystick. One can move those probes from here to there manually by joysticks just like a game or it can be controlled by use of computer and computer can sense where the positions are there where the data have to be captured and on the basis of that it will be done and the position is defined using a reference sphere in x y z coordinates so some kind of sphere spherical uh, work volume is there on the basis of that x y z mainly cartesian coordinates but also can be converted easily to cylindrical coordinates and the spherical coordinates so all those points precisely will be captured and for the inspection and CMMs also allow the probe angle to be controlled to enable measurement of complex surfaces that may otherwise 
unreachable, inaccessible. Many of the cases people find it very difficult for the inspectors in order to access all those difficult uh, profiles uh, in order to go for the measurement. A lot of skill, a lot of knowledge, not a lot of intelligence will be required. But in case of those computer vision, these kind of machine can also go for uh, the measurement of complex surfaces that may otherwise is inaccessible. That is the beauty of the CMM and the most common use of CMM is to test the accuracy of a manufactured part against the original design to ensure stringent quality requirements that are met or adhere to. These quality requirements are specified by the design people. Designers are the boss of technology. They will decide about the specifications and what level of accuracy and precision is required. And on the basis of that, they will give the stipulations and CMM will uh, discover those measured dimensions and find it out whether the stipulations are appropriately honored or not. And this is the implementation of CMM there itself. Why CMM is very utilized, very much important for utility, the reason is I can show. I can show there are some gauges which are good at for mass production, but the problem is that these we need some dedicated gauges like this is a snap gauge. This is a snap gauge. It is for measuring the dimensions of a shaft. This is the go part and this is the no go part. Go will go for a correct dimension, no go will not go for a correct dimension. So this also can be uh, some way or the other you can adjust and this is a very specific case for a specific shaft dimension. So in one stroke one can find it out whether that shaft dimension is okay or not. But the problem is that it is for the external shaft dimension measurement, so dedicated one. In case of this is a snap gauge and this is a plug gauge. What is plug gauge? Plug gauge is to measure. measure the dimensions of a hole. This is the uh, go side, it is written there, go side and no go side. Go side will go and no go side will not go. So in these very fashion, people can find it out that the dimensions of a hole and go side will be smaller because that will go. The smallest dimensions acceptable and no go side with the highest dimension and in the go side there will be wear elements and it is made of a very hard uh, tungsten carbidal steel so that it is dimensionally stable. But the problem is that plug gauge only for hole, snap gauge only for the external dimension of a shaft and that is true also for those ring gauges. This is go ring gauge and no go. This is the go ring gauge with the knurled surfaces and go ring gauge it will go but only for the shaft dimensions. It is a no-go ring gauge, no-go ring gauge and this is also used for mass inspection, no-go ring gauge and this will not go. So these diameters and will be less so that it will not go for a correct dimension. But the problem is that these are all associated with some very, very specific measurement attributes. It is not applicable for all. And there lies the utility of a CMM. It is universal. It can measure external dimension, it can measure internal dimension, it can measure thread gauges, it can measure surfaces and all sorts of things. So the dedicated instrument, inspection instruments and knowledge associated with those people related to the inspection are not that amount required and that is why it is a game changer. All those automobile industries and all those people are utilizing these kind of machines in order to inspect all those components manufactured by their ancillary industries. So today automobile industry it depends on very much ancillarization. That means they are totally dependent on the ancillary industries and they are taking low level parts were not critical parts like say bearings. Bearings inner and outer dresses are not that critical. So a bearing manufacturing company easily can take those materials from a from an ancillary industries but they need some kind of measuring devices like say CMM in order to go for mass inspections of all those components and that will enable them that will enable them 
to go for their manufacturing only they will be interested in manufacturing all those critical parts like say taper rollers the rolling elements which require high quality finish like say lapping honing and super finishing and ultimately the assembly and other things will be done at their time but in order to inspect all those low profile parts which are to be inspected from coming from the ancillary industries or internal inspections also they can carry forward this CMM. So, CMM utility is an universality. In case of machine tool, we have not yet had achieved this universal character. But in case of CMM, yes, we can achieve that. So, that irrespective of the different dimensions, sizes and attributes, we can measure through CMM. And that is the unique selling point of CMM. So, traditionally handle inspection methods have their limitations and rely heavily on the skill of the personnel, uh, personnel inspecting those parts. Very, very skill dependent job. We want to remove the skill even with the persons without having that amount of skill. They can inspect those parts without much. A child also can utilize a CMM if it is appropriately programmed in order to inspect and decide whether the part is acceptable or not. And on the basis of that, it will be, it will be decided. And in addition, as manufacturing design comes more refined, parts are made more complex, meaning some features can only be accurated, measured by CMM. So some parts are only can be inspected properly by CMM because they are so complex and complicated and inaccessible, conventional and measurement will take lot of time and lot of dedicated device in order to do that. Like say gear measurements, their pitch and all those part of it, you require some kind of rollers and then gear vernier and all those things. But in case of CMU, you don't require that. So with the need to speed up the streamline inspection process, this is where CMM inspection offers accurate, repeatable or precise results in a fraction of time, where conventional systems can take few minutes or more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes and the CMM can do it in seconds all the while meeting ever increasing customer demand fast, accurate, precise and repeatable. Even from the conveyors, robotic manipulators can grab all those components, put it into the same CMM table and once it is inspected, it can be gone back to the conveyor itself for the delivery deciding which are repairable and which are rejected or which are properly accepted material. One can see these uh, typical CNC machine bridge type with the probe and it is a Zeiss Brechtum CNC machine. Carl Zeiss manufacture all those probes and these scanning and granite surface tables are there and associated with some computers are associated with that so that they can capture all those points and with the software comparison they found it out whether those kind of profiles are uh, acceptable or not as per the specification laid by the designer. So this is a typical machine, maybe costing 15, 20, 30, 40 lakhs, maybe the makers are mid to toil, granite surface tables are very, very flat and uh, people are having all those automobile industries which are heavily dependent on the ancillary industries and good manufacturing unit are having those things in order to measure the capability of their products. Now come to the other component that is known as surface. Knowing surface is a big job and surface are very important technically for the performance of the different components. What is surface? Surface is what one touches when holding an object such as manufactured part. Manufactured parts are the physical and you can hold on that thing with the kind of surfaces so that is touches. So designer specifies the part dimensions and relating to the various surface to each other. So surface and they have to be defined and critical surface has to be appropriately represented in terms of drawing. And so that the, where the critical surfaces, they have the specific surface roughness, waviness and other part of it that has to be mentioned categorically so that the manufacturers can manufacture those surfaces on the basis of the design specifications. And these normal surfaces representing the intended surface contour of the part and defined by lines of engineering drawing. With the lines of engineering drawing, they are appropriately mentioned, specified in the drawing itself so that the, the manufacturer knows that what kind of surfaces are critical, functional and what they have to produce. 
So nominal surfaces appear as absolutely straight lines, ideal circles, round holes and other edges and that are geometrically perfect. Suppose one has to make all those part of the bullet trends. They require appropriate alignment between the shaft and the hole because otherwise there will be a lot of lateral body movement which is a nightmare for the bullet train operations. In order to make those kind of rotating items, shafts and other things, proper cylindricity of the shaft and the holes has to be ensured with a proper surface finish that only can be checked by appropriate surface measuring instruments. And the actual surface of a manufactured part are determined by the process used to make it out. So there are different type of process to produce surfaces and their quality. Like the flat surface, blunt, it will be planing and shaping. If it is a finer surfaces, then slab milling. If it is finer, finer surfaces, surface grinding. And ultimate surfaces, lapping, honing and super finishing. So on the basis of the requirement of the surfaces, people will uh, decide about the process planning and which kind of component will be responsible for producing those quality surfaces and that will be in line with these representations of the design specification in the drawing itself. With those character and representation and specification, unambiguously the manufacturer will understand that what kind of machining has to be adopted in order to achieve that and the variety of processes available in manufacturing result in wide variations in surface characteristics and it is not important for engineers to understand. So it is very important for the engineers to understand the technology of the surfaces, how we can generate those surfaces and the finer surfaces, lot of time, lot of uh, alertness and other things and best manufacturing practices has to be followed in order to do that. So surface technology is very much concerned with defining the characteristics of a surface, surface texture, surface integrity and the relationship between the manufacturing process and the characteristics of the resulting surfaces. Obviously, there will be good map. Engineering is nothing but a very good mapping. These kind of surfaces will be generated by which kind of process. So, appropriate mapping will be uh, available, accessible to a knowledgeable engineers and according to that he will decide. So, defining the characteristics, surface texture, integrity and all those things and the relationship has to be understood. This is the magnified sections of a typical metallic part surface. The top part is uh, produced by those machines and other things, surface textures and altered layers because of the machining and dimensioning and cutting all those things and substrate is there beyond that surface texture and we can find it out quality of those surfaces on different instruments. So there are different uh, uh, tangible features and all those things can be measured in some kind of uh, scale. So there are some lay directions how the tool movements and they are making a mark of it, how the wave spacings of the surfaces are 3D wave, how the wave spacings are there, how waviness height will be there, the roughness heights and other things will be there captured and roughness widths. Also all the surface measuring instruments can capture all those quality of those surfaces by probing uh, going through those typical profile and there are typical profilometers are also there which can capture all the surfaces from the different component of the object. So there are different laying sail balls, some surface pattern, those kind of laying sail balls are in planning and shipping, then perpendicular movement, then the knurling type of the cross, crisscross uh, uh, things associated with some gnarling activity, then the symbols of surface patterns, all those things depending on the movement of the tool against the surface of the product. And the deviation from the nominal surface used in two definitions of the surface roughness. One can find it out, it is a typical wave. So how the surface has to be characterized, we have to take all the samples of the surface to be concerned for the measurement. We will take all those uh, y values in in graduated uh, dimensions and that has to be recorded and we have to take the mean line, we draw the mean line and find it out how much of line is uh, just deviated from the mean line, whatever may be the surface. So nominal surface and actual surface and the vertical deviations are all measured and then we can come out with a formula. Integration can provide from surface roughness value is from 0 to Lm that is the length of the surface and mod y, y mod 
the reason is that the deviations in one or two directions has to be nullified and mod sign can do that dx divided by lm. So the in terms of the deviation with the length that has to be divided if it is a continuous scale. So Ra is the arithmetic mean value of the surface roughness expressed in microns or this can be in terms of summations and similarly we can do that and that is done by all sorts of surface measuring instruments like Taylor Hobson measuring instrument. The probe will prove go through that and within finite seconds they will microseconds they will capture all those deviations and deviations divided by the number of capture and the mod value and that come out to be the surface roughness of the internet surface in their specified place. And this is very important this is the surface texture symbols engineering drawing how people represent the surfaces where criticality and some functionalities are there. So maximum waviness height, maximum waviness width and these are represented with these symbols maximum roughness, minimum roughness, the lay symbol, the cutoff length and the maximum roughness spacing. So all those parameters are appropriately mentioned in the drawing where the surfaces are of very important thing for functions. So this is the way people represent those surfaces and on the basis of the reading those things people understand that what kind of surfaces uh, machine procedures has to be adopted in order to generate those kind of surfaces. So those are all bibles in terms of parameter representation by a drawing. And these are operations of the stylus type instrument where the traversing direction and the vertical motion of the stylus may be some spring loaded and other part of it and they will record what kind of things in finite distance stylus will record from the work part and on the basis of those parts they will capture all those information and on the basis of that y mod value divided will be the number of observations and surface roughness will be achieved and that way it will be recorded and represented and find it out if people will find it out whether those surfaces are accepted or not and surface roughness values produced by various manufacturing process. So, the manufacturers have a clear understanding of those surfaces produced by the different process. Like say die casting can give very good surfaces. Casting does generally does not give very good surfaces but die casting and investment casting excellent good surfaces. But sand casting poor so lot many machining has to be carried out after casting. Then metal forming. So cold rolling can give good surfaces, sheet metal draw can good, cold extrusion. But hot rolling there are dimensional deviation scales and other things are there. So poor surfaces and those surface ranges can be measured in terms of value. It is there in the handbook. People will refer to those values before manufacturing that. And machining, bowing can give good surfaces but drilling, medium, milling can give good surfaces. Reaming is better than drilling. So good, better than medium because drilling has having more than two cutting edges. So reaming, material removal is, is low but the surface finish of the hole is better. Shaping and planning medium, sawing and all those things poor, turning, good turning can give good. Now go for other processes, abrasive and all those things, very good processes. So grinding can give very good surface finish, honing very good, uh, lapping, polishing, super finishing excellent. All those bearings and balls and rolling elements are coming from lapping, polishing and super finishing. And non-traditional one chemical milling medium, electrochemical is can give good surfaces but electric discharge beam and laser beam can give medium quality surfaces. And thermal welding is not going to give very good surfaces, arc welding, flame cutting and plasma cutting they give poor surfaces. So that lot of machining has to be carried out whenever the dimensional requirements and all those things are associated with those kind of processes. So lot many uh, post processing has to be done with the arc welding they can have a very good joining but their surface finish is not accurate one has to do some kind of stress relieving and heat treatment process associated with those arc welding flame cutting and plasma arc cutting activities and then final machining also they cannot be the finished product for the critical components so one has to remember if they join and all those kind of products then final operation has to be some machining and other things in order to generate good critical surfaces. So these kind of knowledge for all n number of processes are there in the handbook 
and on the basis of those knowledges people engineers decide that what kind of surfaces and other things will be produced by them and they actually measure those surfaces in terms of Taylor Hobson measuring or other kind of stylus measurement through which they know that the surface is of the intended quality or not. So that's all. So today we have discussed about the coordinate measuring machine and the surfaces which will be come out from those metrology of those things and what are the relevant process which are capable of producing those kind of surfaces associated with that. So thanks for your patient hearing. Thank you.